everyone, it's Mandy here, and we're coming to you live with Inspirations with Amanda Day. And this is our first, um, my first day on the radio with my own segment, and I'm really excited. So um, it's really awesome to be here. I um, have had a couple of really good chats with Ria, and we decided to start an inspirational show. So it's with great pleasure that I get to introduce you to one of my most amazing friends, um, a colleague, a really good friend, uh, Catherine Goddard. And today I'd love to call, I call her Dr. Cat, um, but I just wanted to get her on board because I wanted to hear about what she does. Um, her work's really interesting. Uh, I'll let her sort of tell you, you guys a little bit about her. But... Um, yeah, I just thought, what a great person to kick off the series, then Kat, because we've been talking the last few weeks about stress and burnout. Um, this is a yachting radio show, so it's in, you know the middle of the season. A lot of people still have another four weeks, some eight to go. Then we go into the big boat shows like Monaco and Genoa, and the, um, some big races are on at the moment. We've got the Maxi Wells in Porto Turbo. Um, then there's going to be Saint Tropez going on. Uh, there's so many people right in the thick of it. It's been a long, hot summer. We're dehydrated. We're thirsty. We're tired. We're sick of the sun. And quite a lot of people need a break. And Kat's someone I turn to when I feel like I need a break. She's helped me make some massive shifts in my life. And that's why I've got her on the show today. So welcome, Kat. Hello. <laughs> Hello from lovely, sunny Byron Bay in spring. Byron Bay, one of my most favourite In Australia. Ever. In Australia, that's right. So you are a physio by profession and you've sort of taken that out and gone in a few different fields. Do you want to just tell us a little bit about who you are and where you're from and um, what, how you got to be the amazing cat that I know? Yes, <laughs> I'd love to. So I was born in Australia and grew up in Switzerland, but I always had this pull to go to the ocean. I love the ocean. So that's a good connection with the yachting <laughs> uh, people. I love the ocean and in Switzerland it's landlocked. So there was no ocean. It was cold and I do love snowboarding, but I do love the ocean and the sun and warmth. So... Um, 12 years ago, um, I left Switzerland with my then husband and two small children in Australia and quickly realized that I couldn't work as a physio. And I was working in neuro rehab in Switzerland, which was really fun. It was no session was the same because I had a lot of MS clients or science and every you know you hear ms and you think this is what ms means but every person was different and that's what i loved i love variety i thrive on it um so anyway we came to australia um and i realized i can't work here i yeah i could have but i would have had to go to uni and leave my kids at home and that's just that wasn't an option for me so I kind of started, you know, work and I said, okay, what lights me up? And that's kind of always my guiding light. What lights me up? What would I love to do? And so I became a yoga teacher. That kind of blew my mind, opened up a whole new world for me. Um, because before, you know, I grew up in a very straight 180 family. There was, my mum was very religious. So deadly no yoga nothing <laughs> anything like it and um so I stepped into this first yoga class and we meditated at the end or it was like a final relaxation and my mind was just blown away it's like oh my god this whole new inside world that I never knew existed opened up and you know, I'm a very grounded, down-to-earth person, always have been. And as a physio, you know, very scientific. Um, and and then, you know, if, if someone had said yoga to me, I just did it for the physical benefits back in Switzerland. If, if someone said, oh, let's do some chanting, 
I said, no, nah, let's skip chanting. Let's just get straight into the physical exercise. That's rubbish. Let's let's work out. And and so then in Australia, being a mom of two small kids, this meditation, it just like it just opened up a whole new world and it was amazing. And so I became a yoga teacher. Um, and then I did NLP and then I did lots of courses then I did a uh, massage diploma because I, st- I love being with people um, and I love to touch people my kids always say that sounds so weird mum but I do I like <laughs> I like to hug people I like to be with people and um, so yeah um, massage diploma and then I guess on my own journey so the marriage broke down um my ex is bipolar and it just got too hard he was literally an alcoholic and in the end I said look you know I love you but I just can't do this anymore I can't carry everyone it's like having another child and um yeah, so I went through my own healing journey and, um, you know, as we all do, like anyone I work with, everyone has a story and, you know, on paper or on Facebook it all looks so good and yay, I'm fine. But we all have a story that usually is painful and stressful and not so the, the parts of us that we don't want to share. So anyway, I went on my way to become my own best friend, to become my soulmate, you know. So instead of finding another man, I was like, no, I'm just going to turn it within and and I want to be friends with myself. I want to know who I am. And that led me down the track to um, emotional clearing or it's called the spiral, the modality. It's fairly new. It uses um, muscle testing like in kinesiology um, where you ask the subconscious mind. So instead of asking the brain, hey, hey, what, what do you need? Or the mind, we ask the body, hey, what do you need? And I know it might sound a bit woo-woo, but it's actually, it works. Um, and um, so, yeah, this emotional clearing, I jumped straight in. It just felt right. Someone wrote a post and I went, that's what I want. And I messaged this lady, the practitioner, and signed up. And so what happened when I was in physio, and interrupt me if I'm talking too much because, as you know, I could I can talk underwater. <laughs> no, this is brilliant. <laughs> Let it flow. Let it flow. And I may have some questions. Um, yeah, cool. And if I do, and I really need to, um, I'll, I'll go stop. <laughs> I've got a question. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. yeah, keep going. This is amazing. And so useful to so many people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think so too because, you know, we all think, every, we, th- every, we think everyone else thinks, you know, this is what we have to keep up with, with everyone and every, we have to put on this show and it's just not true. The true freedom is when you just be you in the light and the dark and, and you know, that's freedom to me or that's true happiness. So anyway, uh, where was I? Uh, I went through spiral. It's an eight-week process. And um, so I failed my first final exam in physio. Um, and I used to always be this top A student. I was like a genius kid. I was amazing. And then I, me, I failed this exam. And it was the shame, the humiliation, the... And, and specifically, it, it anchored in this belief, I'm not good as a practitioner at, at, at my job, basically. And so, yeah. so then, you know, I just had to reset the exam after three months and no one else thought about it. And I didn't really, but, but I did for 21 years. Every time I would work as a physio or then later in Australia in massage or in the yoga teaching or anything I did, I'd always have this, oh, it's not good enough. What if it's not good enough? What if, what if they hate it? Even with the massage, it's like, you know, I, I hope you don't mind if I swear, but I'm like, for God's sake, Kat, you're a physio. 
And here yeah. you are doing massage and you're doubting yourself, like, what is this? And But I just couldn't shake it. And so I went through spiral and just like this, suddenly it was gone. And that kind of showed me the power of this weird modality that no one had ever heard about. It was just gone after 21 years of, of suffering. And, and I said... I need to, I want to teach, I want to do this. I want to be a practitioner. And a month later, I jumped into the training and started, uh, that's nearly three years ago, and did spiral and, um, or emotional clearing. So where, do you want me to explain what it is? I was just about to ask, yeah. So a lot of, a lot of people on this radio station won't know a lot of these, um, these, even things like NLP, so some people wouldn't have heard. So if you could just clarify what each one is. And because Spiral, I believe, is um, foundation here in Australia, was saying the one that set it up in Australia. So yeah. Yeah. I don't, I, it, there's not a lot of people that would have, um, it would have reached over here too. So, yeah, if you could just explain all of that, that would be amazing. Yeah, so NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming, so we, where we learn to rhythm our language, but we also have um, timeline therapy where we go back to memories and go and reframe what happened. So we all have stuff that's happened to us, like with me failing the exam, that we can't change what happened, but we can go back and change the meaning of it. You know, maybe we can go back and go, so for me going back and go, okay, I did fail that exam or I didn't pass the exam and but now I can see that because I doubted myself so much, um, it made me learn so many different things, which has brought me to where I am now. You know, it made me do yoga. It made me do meditation. It made me be open to new things that without that, I would have just been a physio and I would have just kept going. So, yeah, you know, now I look back and I'm grateful for it because it opened up a whole new world that's much more like me. It, it yeah. resonates much more with me. I think a lot of people would understand that, um, you know, how I remember, you know, experiencing that was the first time I got sacked and I, yeah. I think I've only been sacked once and I was mortified. I was just so, like you yeah. said, in shame um, and then it really was affecting every, every step I took, you know, when I went in to do my master's in cardiac yeah. medicine when, you know, I was terrified and it was going back to being sacked on a boat where I was working as a stewardess, even though, you know, even though I was a registered nurse and I was just doing a bit of a summer job at the time and, yeah, it just, uh, and I didn't realise it was going back to this one incident that was actually totally controlling my life. So it's weird how that happened. Yeah, and it and it's interesting. Like uh, as I go along, you know, maybe some people would know Dr. Joe Dispenza. He's a neuroscientist. I'm kind of jumping around a bit, but you'll see how it makes sense. And he yeah. always says we have a heightened emotion, and something happened, and then we anchor them in together. So for me, I failed the exam. I felt shame, humiliation, I'm not good enough. And that anchored itself in to that incident. And then that was like an intense emotion that was, even though the next day and the next day and the next 21 years, that wasn't happening anymore. But I was invested in it subconsciously. I wasn't always thinking about it. But think of yourself as an energy investor. So yes. I was spending energy dollars <laughs> on that incident that happened ages ago after a while. And, um, and I kept investing in that. And I, sometimes I'd think about it and know that it was that 
thing, but then sometimes also not. But because that of that heightened emotion, you don't even have to think about it. Um, Dr. Joe says the the body becomes the brain after a while. So I didn't even have to think about that incident, but I could feel the tightness and I'm not good enough and, uh, 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 you know. Um, and so, so then with spiral, this emotional clearing, when we can, can go back and what I do now, I also do rapid transformational therapy, which is with hypnosis. So one is with muscle testing. The rapid transformational therapy is with hypnosis where we go back to that time and often you don't even know. Someone comes to me and says, I have this problem and then we take you into hypnosis and go back and then some random stuff comes up. Like sometimes as a therapist, I'm sitting there and going, how the hell does that relate to what your problem is? But then when we kind of go to a few scenes, you go deeper and deeper and then we hit the jackpot and then the people go, oh, my God, uh, for example, um, someone who could make money but could never keep it. So she was making 20 grand a month but she never could save like she'd have – a car accident or just always random bills or just she never got to save any. And so under hypnosis, we went back and um, the first memory that came up was she was seven and, and yeah, you just go, you're so relaxed and this stuff just bubbles up. Whatever needs to come up just bubbles up and you don't have to make it happen. You don't have to think about it. It just comes up. Um, so she's seven, she's at the church, she's doing the collection. So everyone's really happy. Everyone's giving her money. She's happy. She walks around, she collects the money, but she never gets to keep it. Right. How and, interesting. Yeah. And, and then, of course, there was a few other ones that were same but different, but with the same theme. You yes. just never get to keep it. Granddad would give money to the poor people when they were struggling themselves, so, you know, kind of things like that. And so then we went and reframed it. So what we then do is either with the emotional clearing or with the hypnosis, we then go and say, hey, what did the younger you need back then? What did you need? Like, did you need a hug? Did you need to know it was going to be okay? It wasn't going to last forever. Did you need to know that your parents were arguing and it had nothing to do with you? You were always worthy. You were loved to do so much, but they were arguing. You know, whatever the scenario is, there's always a little child or a younger version of you that's still in pain. And that's still holding and, and we and people can feel it in their body and you know, you've had sessions with me and you you can attest, you can feel it in the body. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And you really notice it, yeah, when whatever it is is cleared is gone as well. And what I find fascinating too is that it's taken me many years to be okay with having silly childhood drama, you know, because I was always like, well, I grew up in a really happy middle class family. We had everything we wanted and more. You know, we got we could play as many sports and our parents drove us all around and they gave us boats and taught us sailing and took us to the bush and hiking and skiing and and so how can I have any issues when, say, a friend of mine is a refugee, they, you know, they were starving on a boat for two weeks while they sailed to Australia and um, all arrived covered in diesel and no clothes and that people were drowned on the boat. Who am I to say that I've got issues? Um, because when I was young, my, you know, swimming teacher told me I was fat or something and poked me in the tummy or... My best friend, when I was 
six, decided she didn't like me anymore or I couldn't play with that Barbie doll and it becomes this, like, lifelong story and then, you know, I find some kids, some too, like, you get that trigger and rather than saying I'm triggered because this is reminding me of what happened to my body when I was a kid, you start making stories around it, you know, and saying, oh, well, I'm feeling like this and make some drama. Out of, and actually it's just because your whole body's gone, er, you know. Like, I mean, it sounds it, it, it sounds crazy, but it, could, it makes sense why people have these weird blocks, you know, and... And, and, and like keeping the money when you're making so much. I think many of us in this industry and many people listening to Yachting International Radio today um, would, you know, there's, I'd say 50%, maybe not, but so we, we, we make really good money in yachting, but um, a lot of people don't walk away with loads either because, you know, you need the retail therapy from being such a busy season or so many back to back charters or, you know, being so remote for so long down in the Pacific. So, yeah, it, um, I, I think it makes a lot of sense what you're saying. Yeah, and, it's, and, and the interesting thing is, you know, 5%, I, I, I don't know why I always point to the head, 5% is our conscious mind yeah. and 95% is the subconscious mind and the subconscious mind is our driver and we try and figure out our problems with the 5% which we might be able, you know, a bit of mindset work that can help a little bit but I find a lot of people, and me included, you know, I'm, I'm 42 now, I've done a lot of things and some, you know, they help a little bit and then you just kind of go, oh, now I'm back to square one and then you keep going and going. Um, and for me, the emotional clearing and now the, the rapid transformational therapy Plus meditation, super powerful. You know, you always have it there and breath work. It's kind of, um, it's so powerful and it's just the realisation that we kind of go and try and find the solution out there. Oh, yeah, let's go and get peace, you know. Let's um, buy clothes. Let's have sex. Let's eat. Let You know, whatever it is it is that you do to numb your pain or your feelings you don't want to be feeling or you don't want to show anyone. Instead of doing that, all you have to do is just go within and not say, oh, I'm a basket case or, you know, it, that, that's the thing too. That's the beauty of this work, that nothing wrong with you and there never has been. And it's kind of when you realize that it's like, oh, the search is over. I'm home. I'm, you know, I can, I can just be me. And, and, and stuff will, you know, I have stuff come, come up all the time. But now I'm not going, oh, my God, what's wrong with me? I'm such a failure or, you know, whatever. But now I just allow it to move through and, and I do some breath work or, you know, you can do things to raise your vibe or make yourself feel good. But I think like I, um, true freedom is to be okay with whatever is, with whatever you're feeling. That's freedom. You know, I don't believe in the, oh, you, you know, the whole, oh, high vibe. We don't have daytime 24 hours we have day and night we have the ebb and the flow so we have also happy feelings and sad feelings or angry or you know the not so nice feel. I'm going like this because it just is as long as you're not judging it you can just let it flow through you wouldn't say oh for god's sake why is it daytime now you know like no people would say are you crazy yeah. But but with our emotions, with our life, with our partners, <laughs> with you know, we, we judge. And if we come back to a place of acceptance of what is, that is freedom. 
And you can just say, oh, yeah, okay, so I'm a bit sad right now and, and it'll pass if I don't resist it. Yeah, and the, the resistance is huge, you know, and, and so I guess your job is to remove our resistant blocks. Um, mm. So there's two questions I want to ask you. In a minute, I'm going to ask you more about your process and how, you know, you said something before about the um, rapid transformation therapy that you do. Um, I'd like you to explain how it can be so rapid because another thing um, where this is really important for people like us is when you're on a boat moving around the world, you can't, it's very hard, well, it's getting easier these days with the online platforms, but it's quite hard to see a psychologist or a psychiatrist, you know, every week, especially if you've had a bit of a trauma. Um, because we move around so much and most of us spend our life in non-English or native tongue languages, um, as I'm sure you understand. But first of all, um, before we go get into what you actually do and how it works and why it's so rapid and amazing, could you give us some advice? Let's say I'm working on a boat, I'm a stewardess, um, even though it seems like I have a life of freedom sailing around the world, I've had guests on board for eight weeks, back-to-back -back charters. I actually don't get much time outside because it's hard to see the light of day. Um, or on the other hand, I might be a, a decky that's on deck constantly in the boiling hot sun. But let's say I've been actually downstairs in the laundry and making up rooms and doing service. I'm, um, I'm exhausted. I'm frazzled. I haven't seen my husband for four months because he's on another boat. I've just lost cat. We'll just wait for a moment to see if she jumps back in. So I was just going to ask Kat, um, yeah, if she could give us some techniques waiting for her to come back, if she is. Um, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> my oh, yeah. timer went off. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, I was just asking if, yeah, you could give us some some life hacks. So let's say that I've been on a boat. I haven't seen my husband for four months. He's on another boat. I haven't stopped work for two months. Um, work, work, work. No time outside. Not much. I've lost sort of. Haven't been able to fit in any routines of any description. I'm starting to feel stressed. I'm needing four coffees a day to function. I'm feeling a bit snappy um, and and anxious. What could I do to? Okay, so you know, if we just choose not. For me, the word high vibe is not just being happy and like you know, like full on all the time. It's about being able to accept um, and when these feelings come through you, being able to shift it and and move out or catch those negative thoughts, shift it and release it, you know, and um, rather than stuff it down and stuff it down and use vices to stuff it down more, be able to express it without judgment, then we can truly release it and move on. So if I were to just take, um, say, five minutes today to get back on board, as in back on board within myself, um, what is there any sort of breath work or tricks or quick meditations you could recommend? Yeah, so one meditation that I really love, I usually do it in 20 minutes, but often people who've never meditated before, they might be going, I used to be like that. Like, what? 20 minutes? That's so long. But I'll just give you the 20 minute breakdown. And then you can obviously cut down and just make each increment, increment um, shorter. If you know, maybe to start with, maybe make three minutes, three minutes. So uh, four times three minutes. So the first segment would be just sit down, close your eyes, and just focus on your breath and as you can see I'm talking and I'm already closing my eyes so so maybe just do it with me you know just close it if you can if you're not if you're not um, operating heavy machinery or driving <laughs> um, put the iron down <laughs> yeah 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 you, you can close your eyes and just 
um, focus on your breath and just while you're breathing, long, deep belly breaths. So you're feeling your belly, your rib cage, and drawing the breath right up to the tips of your lungs. And your tips of your lungs are right above your collarbone. So they're quite far up. And then on the exhale, just ah, let it go silently or loudly. It's actually quite nice to just ah, sigh it all out if, if, you know, if you can. Just focusing on what's going on on the inside instead of having the focus out. So just focusing on the breath. And it's always good to focus on the breath because when we focus on the breath, we can't focus on what the mind's saying. And so... Is that true? That's a, is well, that the, true? Mi the mind, yeah, the mind will still keep... B -b 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 yeah. <clears throat> but you can't give 100% focus to your mind while you're focusing on the breath. Do you know what I mean? I think that that alone is such an important reason for everyone to try this exercise. Okay, I'm going back to shutting my eyes. Mm, yeah. And so so you guys can just keep breathing and just focus your breath. And so when we slow down our breath, we automatically slow down our mind. And a lot of people, so you guys can just keep breathing, focusing on your breath while I speak. So a lot of people think, oh, meditation is... I have no thoughts and that actually rarely happens that you have no thoughts. So like Manda was saying, you might be focusing on your breath but the, the, the mind will still keep spitting out things and that's just the job of the mind and when we can just realize that and just go, oh yeah, cool, it'll just keep doing its thing but I am focusing on the breath. So the mind, you know, you might be focusing on the breath and then suddenly the mind runs off. I always say it's like a naughty dog, you know, the dog that's supposed to walk by your side and then it just runs off <laughs> and then you keep saying, come back, come back to the breath, come back. And, and it's just so simple. You just, you just focus on the breath. So maybe sometimes I focus on like, oh, my belly's moving. Ah, oh, my chest is moving. Ah, oh, my, um, you know, it's coming right to the top. My collarbones and my sternum are moving too. Ah, oh, and then it's letting go. Um, other times I focus on the sound of the breath. Um, you know, so, so there's many aspects that you can just within focusing on this breath what you can do you can mix it up a bit again I get bored easily so I like to mix it up a bit yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And, and um so yeah so first five minutes focus on the breath then five minutes gratitude have a gratitude rant in your head or out loud if you're alone or, you know you know you can I'm grateful that I have clothes, I'm grateful that I had breakfast, I'm so grateful that I got to live another day, I'm grateful that I'm healthy, I'm grateful that I get to live this amazing life where not every day is the same, blah, blah, blah. And the more you do it, the more you get into it and, you know, sometimes you just start laughing at like the stuff that you're grateful for and, and what maybe when you're in a shitty mood or in a you know maybe in a bad place maybe you know someone's passed away or then you could be grateful for you know what you had with those people or um yeah the, it, it's limitless and I think it's it's we often talk about the attitude of gratitude you know it's kind of the more gratitude you have the more expansive you feel and I talk about this a lot it's like life is expansive you know life happens in the expansion and when you breathe deeply you feel expanded after a while 
And yeah. when we're stressed and worried and, oh, my God, I have to go there and what's my boss going to say and, oh, my God, and when am I going to see my wife and my kids next or, you know, whatever your problems are, problems usually make us feel contracted and yeah. the air gets trapped, <laughs> everything gets kind of trapped. And so this might still be happening but if you can – come into expansion through the breath, through gratitude. Well, what can I be grateful for? Wow, we don't have war in this country. I, you know, I, I get to vote. I get to, as a woman, I get to move freely and blah, 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 you know. So, so yeah, five minutes focus on the breath. Five minutes gratitude. Five minutes visualize start missing your perfect day. What is? What are you dreaming? What are you calling in? And I do recommend writing that down. Like I typed mine out from when I get up in the morning till I go to bed. And, you know, where do I wake up? Who do I wake up with? Um, in my version, you know, I have two dogs. I don't have dogs. I live in a unit at the moment with my three kids. I live two minutes walk to the beach which is amazing, but I'd love to have a bigger house. la di da di da di da you know. So, And you just start building it out. And the more you do it, after a while, it's actually interesting. The more I do it, some, suddenly it takes on a life of its own. And suddenly while I'm visualizing something that's not even here yet, it is in a quantum reality, but it's, I'm not living it just yet. But suddenly you get grateful for what you're visualizing and, you know, you feel these feelings of gratitude and you go, oh, my God, this is amazing. I'm feeling so amazing and expansive and it's not even here yet. And yeah. and I know, mate, yeah, you know, I have friends. They think I'm so crazy and woo-woo, but I don't really care because I have enough friends who are crazy enough to, to dream and yeah. and who are bringing in and who have brought in the life of their dreams just by giving it energy every day. And people in this um, community will really understand this because to, you know, work on a boat takes some visualisation. You know, I know I dreamed and dreamed and dreamed about it and I'll never forget the first boat I worked on. I was like, oh, my God, I used to daydream about this boat. Yeah. I used to yeah. You know, and um, my husband, I think, like, used to have a picture of the boat he ran on his wall as a child. And then I had a picture of the boat he was running and um, that, that we went racing on, on you know, on my pin board. And, you know, and it, and it all, it, I'm sure a lot of it comes through these daydreams. It makes it, you know, if you can dream about it, you can do it. I use I use a lot of this dream work my you know I, I call it vision work myself because you gotta you gotta think big and um and I think a lot of that's how a lot of people have got to be in this industry is is, is having those dreams and beliefs and you know getting out of the town they grew up in and getting their tickets and finding a ship and going to sea so yeah please yeah take. totally yeah. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, so it does sound a bit crazy, but when you bring it back down, it's like we all do it, right? Everyone actually does daydream. It's just we think we shouldn't because when we were children, we were told not to daydream, and I was always told off for daydreaming. And I never forget when I said I was going to the Caribbean, all my friends teased me, and then I was being called the Caribbean princess at school. But actually I did end up there and I've made a career out of it, thanks very much, school friends. Yeah, but I had a yeah. Big job. And I was super paranoid and always felt like, you know, this weirdo with these crazy ideas and dreams. But that was actually my purpose. <laughs> anyway, I'll let you carry on. Yeah. No, it's, it's powerful stuff and, and I'm the manifestation queen. And, and the thing is <sighs> the reality is usually better than what you dreamed you know, and when you suddenly go, 
oh my god <laughs> look at where I am and look at what happened and if you let it you know but if you're like no this is bullshit yeah you know, whatever you believe it's do. so give it a go um, but I find you know if you dedicate every day if you have 20 minutes I do you know what I do I'm multitasking I'm a mum every single month three I make my coffee I go and sit outside I go and do my meditation, my 20 minutes. Or now it's now it's about an hour every morning, um, where you know I drink coffee and I do this. You know, instead of just sitting there and drinking coffee, I, I I'm calling in what I want to, and I'm getting in the vibe into the expansion into the, oh my god, you know this is amazing. So yeah, so we had breath awareness, gratitude visualization and then the last five minutes is um breath awareness again so you focus on the breath again and often in those last five minutes you'll have um ideas drop in or phone that person or go do this or you know and and so actually in all honesty because i'm i'm um how do you say um this specific meditation I learned from Jesse Elder, so I don't want to sell it as my own because it's not. Um, <laughs> um, and who's but Jesse Elder? Yeah, a lot of people. Jesse know. Elder. Yeah, who's oh, that? Oh, he's a he's a meditation guy. He's a um, how, do, how would yeah a coach. Yeah, he's really cool. And um, I just started doing it and it just took on a life of its own. And, and so, yeah, it's, it's something simple that I like to share. That's worked for me. Amazing. Um, and, you know, on you guys that are actually physically on the boats right now, don't think, oh, I can't do that because I can't sit there, you know, on the deck and go, oh, what you can do is every time you go to the toilet, the tape, I mean, maybe not the deep breathing but take a moment feel your breath think of three things you're grateful for even if you're having the worst season ever and you hate the boat and you think all the crew you work with are annoying and you're just hot and fed up there's something you know maybe the boat provides a toothbrush that you just brushed your teeth with maybe the boat's paying you all this money that you get to go on an amazing holiday or go surfing in Mexico or go home for Christmas with your parents or get to donate to, you know, an amazing charity. Or maybe you get to use it for further education and more courses. Um, There has to be something. Maybe it's just a cup of of coffee that got you out of bed this morning or or the song you listened to, you know, when you were winding down last night or the book you're reading for five minutes a night for escapism. There's got to be something. And then just have tap into that dream. I use this work a lot, you know. I travel a lot, so that's when I let my mind get active. But just keep tapping into it. Keep tapping into that visualisation because it lights you up. It makes you feel, like Pat said, more expansive. It makes you feel more like, oh, that feels great. And then you can, you know, you've got a light at the end of the tunnel. Then you can start thinking, oh, well, you know, what if I give 10% of the money and, to this charity or maybe I start an NGO and feel better about it or maybe I am going to go and do this PhD or maybe I'm going to fly to Byron Bay and do Cat's next retreat because she sounds amazing. You know, there's always something there. So um, just you can do all this in micro dosing. You know, you can do little bits while you're on the toilet, while you're, you don't really wash up, but while you're folding clothes, while you're polishing the boat, you know while you're cleaning the bottom because they're really healthy things to think. And so now can we move on into what if um, how does this work? So what's so special about it? And I mean, can you explain why how you could un- unleash a block and 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 me feel completely different or have more success or have a brighter day, you know? How, what what makes it rapid? Yeah, so what makes it rapid is that 
people come to me and often within one, two, three, four sessions or, you know, not very long compared to normal therapy, which we're not putting down at all. But what I find is when we talk about our problems, it's, it's something we've already in our minds spoken about maybe for years. Maybe we've spoken to, about it to our friends, our family, you know, but, 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 but it, it, it has a life of its own. So there's a lot of energy in that problem and we're giving it more energy. So often I find when we go and maybe do another talk therapy, it's, it, it becomes even bigger. You know, someone might give us some good strategies and ideas, you know, absolutely. But um, what I find makes this so rapid is so we go into hypnosis and hypnosis isn't, you know, you're not like on a, in a stage hypnosis where you're like this and then you like slow dance the broom. It's, it's not that at all. <laughs> um, it's, it's actually, it feels like a guided meditation, so if you did close your eyes before, you know, I'll get you to close your eyes and then I get you to do a few movements with your eyes. So when we roll it, if you want to do it now, you keep your neck straight and you look up to the ceiling, up to a point on the ceiling as high as you possibly can without moving your neck. Beautiful. And just keeping your eyes up as high as you possibly can. And don't worry, I'm not putting you into hypnosis. And then just exhaling, rolling your eyes back down. Yeah, so that's how we start when we go into hypnosis. So we're giving your brain a boost of alpha brain waves, and that then helps you go down into uh, hypnosis. So when we're in our conscious mind, and if we're in a beta wave, so we're like, you know, like sympathetic nervous system, stress. Uh, fight flight you know all that stuff yeah and so when we just start doing looking up I mean you can even do that obviously don't do it when you're driving um but if you just want to calm yourself down a bit you can even just closing down your eyes going inwards puts you in a lower brainwave state and so so then we relax you Relax the body. I like to go through the body just because I'm a physio. I'm a feeling person, so I like to go through the body. Um, and especially for people who are very in their mind, in their head, it sometimes takes a bit longer to switch off. But if you kind of go through the body, you know, suddenly the brain goes, uh, 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 you know, relax your arm, relax your leg, relax your toes, relax your back. And then suddenly the mind, the, the brain just goes, yeah, whatever, <sighs> relax and <sighs> let go. And so then, so you, you still you still have your conscious mind, but your subconscious mind, I kind of always show it visually, like the conscious mind goes down, the subconscious mind becomes stronger. And so then we take you, you know, we regress you to a time that has everything to do with why you make money but you can't keep it or why you always get very stressed when your boss gets angry at you or, you know, whatever it is. Um, and, and then, as if by magic, <laughs> something will come up. And sometimes people have no memories but then we find a way around it and it always works. Um, and, and then so people can – still talk and they can tell me what they're seeing and what they're feeling and what is happening and sometimes it's not very clear either um and yeah so usually we go to three scenes that have everything to do with your problem sometimes four sometimes five i just go by intuition um and then we have these scenes and then, you know, we ask, I ask the client, so can you see how these scenes have shaped your life, how, how they've created this problem or kept it in place? And, you know, usually they then can say yes. And then we go to each scene and we say, okay, what did you need? What didn't you get? What didn't you know? 
what did you really need? And some of those scenes, you know, as crazy as it sounds, but the other day I had a lady, she was just being born and she always had this feeling of not being loved and not being important in her family. And she went to a, um, a memory where she was just being born and no one was with her. Her dad was looking very worried and was looking at mum who was being stitched up because she was nearly dying. And the baby, you know, not not in words but in feeling so felt like I'm not important, no one's looking after me. So she always held this resentment, belief that she wasn't good enough, her family didn't love her. And then within that session, something that would have taken 20 years of therapy or had taken decades of therapy was just gone in an instant because she could then see from that, from her adult mind, well, actually, that wasn't the truth. She was very loved, but like in any emergency, you go and look after the most injured first, and yeah. that happened to be her mother. And it didn't mean anything about her and her worthiness and if she was loved or not, not at all. And then she could just in an instant just let that go and forgive herself for creating that belief and forgive her parents for not being able, you know, not, giving her what she needed but then you can also reparent yourself and and say hey I'm your parent now because I'm an adult now and only I know what you needed you know because we expect our partner our kids our friends our parents to give us what we need but how how would they know they don't because they're the same in their little movie <laughs> so and and I just find it so empowering because you then realize wow this is total self-responsibility I'm becoming my own loving parent now and I can give myself at all times what I need so if you're angry at your partner because he's not giving you attention you can tap into that little girl that felt alone and say hey I love you I'm here come on let's play I'm always here I'm, I'm your cheerleader and then you're not putting so much pressure on other people you're not blaming and shaming others but you can take full responsibility for creating the life that you want and I really 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 get that because what I find with a lot of my coaching clients is that they they've got everything back to front like everything's in reverse they're saying when I find the man of my dreams I'll be happy when I find the wife that I can sail around the world and have three babies through I'll be happy when I um, get, um, you know, my first $100,000 in the bank or my first million-dollar country house, I'll be happy. When I, you know, move back to my place of origin and we're, we're choosing to defer happiness and rather than showing, you know, so rather than showing up as the woman that gets a man of the dreams and the beautiful house and you know, the money in the bank and the bad kids, you know, you, you, you're you waiting for it and you're not being that person. And so often it, it's all here right now and we get to be that person right now rather than waiting till we lose weight or make the money or find the person. And we're always projecting, like looking outside ourselves for validation and for happiness when it's 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 right here and, and I start with a lot of my sessions and, you know, because I work with a lot of the captains and chief officers and I run the medical trainings too when I talk about emotional wellness, I often get everyone to give themselves a big hug and they, they think it's really silly but if everyone gives themselves a hug now, like sometimes that's all you need. You don't actually need the hug from the other person. You just need some self-love to, you know, really feel so much better so yeah I um I hear you so if um if I wanted to book a session with you or for those people watching 
how do we find you? We'll put your links in the comments below. But what, um, yeah, how does it look? How do they find you? What do you actually do? Yeah, so I have a page. So <laughs> I was saying to Amanda before, um, I don't have a website yet. I don't really spend that much time on Facebook because I want to be out there living and being in nature and being in at on the ocean. <laughs> yeah. um, so, you know, and that's that's been one of my blocks and Manda's helped me and given me a lot of permission to say, hey, this is who you are and the right people will come to you because what you do is amazing and it's like, hell yeah, that's, that exactly. I don't want to spend my day on a laptop, you know, trying to create an image that I'd rather just be living yeah. um, and having I fun. I, I, I wanted to wear a sailor's hat and a cute little outfit for this sailor's hat. <laughs> yeah. You decided she should just get up and see who she really is. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. And I think too, people, I get that a lot from clients saying, um, I can just be me with you. I can just be myself. I don't have to pretend. I yeah. feel if, and that's what I really want, that people feel like they can drop the facade and just say, hey, I'm feeling really shit, I want to kill myself. Or, you know, like everything's welcome in this space because it's a loving space and it it needs to be expressed in some way. Um, so, yeah, back to the question. <laughs> how, can, how can they find me? Um, so I have the page Catherine Godward Rapid Transformation Coach. Or just on my Facebook page. Maybe with the Facebook page, send me a private message and say, hey, I, I've come through Manda or I've come through Yachting International Radio. So I know because I do get a lot of friend re requests and, you know, sometimes I look at them, sometimes I don't. So if you're really keen for a session, um, send me a message and say, hey, <laughs> I want to work with you. Where do I sign up? Um, and, yeah, and, and I was actually saying to Manda, you know, when, when she said, oh, it's actually going to be on this radio, I was like, wow, that's one of my dreams to travel the world and get paid to be me. And so, you know, I'm also open to to come to you. Like, you know, obviously it has to work um, both ways and and with my kids and you know but um yeah I'm open to just yeah I'm an adventurous soul so usually I work online but I also do in-person retreats in Byron can be in groups or one-on-one -on -one. um or you know if if time money or if everything fits then I can also come to you um, so, yeah. Okay, you might end up on a boat sailing across the Pacific. <laughs> I know. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, yes. Yeah, awesome. Um, well, thank you so much. And so if you could leave me with three things that could make a massive impact in my life, you know, once again, imagining that I'm in yachting at the heat, heat, height of the season, um, I can't see the wind from the trees. I don't even know. I might even have to just turn the boat around and then go to the um, Caribbean. I don't know when, you know, my last holiday was in April and I don't know when the next one's coming. It could be two years away if I stick with this program. What are three things you could leave with me with? What are three top things um, that... You know, you can repeat some of the things from the exercises that be something new. How can I stay, how can I give myself what I need? How can I be, show up as me and be really happy with that and keep the stress levels down? Um, what, what would you be your top tips? What, what can I think about every now and then to just go, oh, no. Yeah. So, so the first one, you know, the, the meditation, if you have... 20 minutes time 
10 to 20 minutes time tap into that if that's too long and if you have one minute breath work that's changed my life it also gives you instant power and you feel this inner power not in a forceful way but this like you can't mess with me this is who I am uh, kind of this unapologetic your essence comes out and what I can share you know don't do it if you're pregnant um, and certain heart conditions you know you'd want to check with your doctor but you can just breathe let's say you know start with 11 you can do 22 33 you know you can keep going expanding that you just go you breathe in through and so you oxygenate your body um, and so you count to 11 and then you do some normal breathing, count to 11, normal breathing, count to 11. So three rounds of 11 and then build it up to three rounds of 22. Just, just focus on the breath, connect with the breath because from the day you're born till the day you die, you have your breath and Mother Earth. That, those two things you have for sure, but everything else comes and goes. You, you can't... You know, you can't bank on anything else. So for me, more and more and more and more, the evidence focuses on don't focus on the money, don't focus, focus on your breath and focus on connecting with nature, which you guys are in the yachting industry. But I'm sure, you know, when you're working, it's not so romantic how maybe I view it. <laughs> But, you know, yeah, you know, sit on the deck and breathe. Sit on the deck and focus on your gratitude. Um, and, and, yeah, what are you calling in, you know? Who, maybe who do you want to be? What kind of person do you want to be? So journal. I'm not much of a writing journaler. I'm more of a talker, as you can see and hear. Um so I'll often journal on voice messages, you know, that flows much easier for me than journaling in written form. Um, but yeah, often when you journal, suddenly you'll find yourself saying stuff or writing stuff that your conscious mind didn't even know. Yeah. You know, that, oh, that's what I desire, or this is where I'd love to go, or this is what I'm calling in. And and fo follow the breadcrumbs, follow what lights you up. Do not stay in a job because it gives you money because the true wealth, true abundance is living the life of your dreams and that is you'll find it in what lights you up. Yeah. And I'd so, say that's the secret to life. Yeah, I agree. I find that in a lot of my coaching because I do a lot of vision work with my, um, with my coaching clients. And often people are wanting to say sail around the world, um, but then they're going off on these all these tangents and forgetting that they actually just want a simple boat and sail around the world. And then they, you know, and sometimes it's like, well, why don't we just future pace that, and you can just start sailing around the world, you know, like, or how do we just get you to that point so you don't have to go through all this other stuff, so. Thank you so much. It's been really valuable having you on. I know we could talk for another hour, but we're going to wrap it up. <laughs> and um, it's been amazing having you on Yachting International Radio. Uh, welcome to the yachting community. And guys that are listening, thanks for your time. You'll find Pat's information. Um, at, we'll, um, Ria and I'll add it to the links later on. Um, if you're ever in Byron Bay, give Pat a shout. She also runs some pretty cool retreats from time to time and some she was telling me before about some amazing VIP days she does down there where she can help you find like a fab villa and um you know hook you up with some adventure people to take the surfing or whale watching and stuff like that or you can take her with you skydiving <laughs> skydiving you know so yeah get in touch all sorts of epic things and Thanks so much. You've been on Inspiration with Amanda J. Yay. Thank you so much for having me. Awesome. All right. Well, thanks. See you soon. Yeah. Bye. Bye.